Hey, is that folk music that you play there? What is that? How do you call that folk music? <laughs> I think it was Studs Terkel who asked Big Bill Brunzi, did he consider his blues music to be folk music? And Big Bill says, well, I never heard no horses. <laughs> None of it. My name is Ralph Litwin. Our guest today is Laura Higgins. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Nice to have you on the show. My you're, pleasure. You're a Jersey born, bred, and raised. I am. Girl. I'm a Jersey girl. Yeah, I live out in Hunterdon County. Well, closer to Pennsylvania now, but um, I grew up in Somerset County, right in the center. So, yeah, I, I like I I see Jersey as a garden state, not so much as living on the turnpike. Although I did I get agree. I get I got uh, made fun of a little bit in college, though. So <laughs> but that's okay. Where did you go to school? Uh, I went to Boston College, and uh, that's where I started doing music, is in the Boston scene, and it's really got a rich music scene there. Yeah, it's very, nice. mm -hmm. very intense up there. It's a little intense, but in a good way, you know. So, you want to tell us something about that first song? Uh, I wrote that for a friend of mine that was just going through a really rough time. A lot of my songs are sort of a way for me to process either 
tough times that I are going through or my friends are going through. It sort of helps me to put a little bit of a salve over the pain of life, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so most of my songs deal with some kind of trauma <laughs> one way or another. Good, I could use one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, Kurt Vonnegut said, the only proof I need for the existence of God is music. And I, I believe that. I think that there's something divine in the way that music can sort of extract the pain from somebody and either heal it or at least make a person feel a little less alone. Or for me, I say it scratches the itch, you know. So it becomes more of a necessity to me than a luxury. <laughs> Very nicely said. Yeah. So, should I play another one? Yes, okay. by all means. Um, I'm going to play one. I, I married a math teacher, which was fantastic because the drama of music should not be met with more drama ever. <laughs> um, and the good thing is he grounds me. The bad thing is he doesn't write me songs. <laughs> but that's okay. So what I did was I wrote a song for myself from him. <laughs> and um, I said, Andy, come here. you got to hear the song I wrote for you. <laughs> <laughs> You came in and that. Uh, anyway, so this is called Picture of You. Um, and it goes like this. Fingertips slip down the length of your spine. And all I want is for you to know that I see you. I don't think that you give yourself credit sometimes. I keep a picture of you in my back pocket. I don't know how I can help you. I keep a picture of you next to the place I fall asleep. Maybe it's just that I'm too close. Maybe I dig too deep, maybe I stay too long. Maybe your bleeding heart can only take so much because you're falling apart and you don't want me to touch you tonight. Well, that's all right. I'll keep a picture of you in my back pocket I don't know how I can help you I'll keep a picture of you next to the place I fall Sometimes they're messy and all wrong. Maybe I'm trying too hard to be everything. Maybe you don't know much about listening to yourself when you tell me I'm better off letting you go. I'm not letting you I don't know how I can help you. I'll 
I'll keep a picture of you next to the place I fall asleep. Mm. Wasn't that sweet of him? <laughs> very moving song. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I was, uh, I, was, I was in need of someone to write me something. And then I, started to, I decided to practice constructive living and take care of it myself. <laughs> so, you know, that's the way it goes. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. You have a lovely voice. Thank you. Thanks. It's been a journey. You know, embrace it. I, I have a quirky voice, and um, that's what my producer said. And, um, you know, I'm the kind, I've got this fragile ego. I think most musicians do. I think we're all cursed with this sort of neediness, this inner turmoil. And I don't know, I can only speak for myself, but I can latch on to the one word in somebody's compliment that sounds like a not so much compliment. <laughs> and I was working with this producer in Boston, and he's fantastic, and I absolutely adore him. And he said, you know, you've got a really quirky voice. And he meant it in a good way. But I went home and r my, racked my brain over the word quirky. And I was up all night. I couldn't sleep. I, I, you know, because he, he said quirky. And as it went through the air, there were like these little devils in, that twisted it around into your voice is horrible, you know? So that's how it hit me. And um, so I was up all night. And I ended up actually writing myself a lullaby. We, this was during when we were um, recording the first album. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I decided I needed to write myself a lullaby, and it actually ended up, it's the title track on Mr. Confidence, and um, I'll play it. It's only like a minute or a minute and a half long, but um, I used it to kind of get me to sleep, and then, uh, of course, I was up all night because I had just written a song, but I um, <laughs> actually woke my husband up, too. I was like, eh. But anyway, it's called Mr. Confidence, and it goes like this. Where have you been, Mr. Confidence? I always seem to miss you when you call. And I've got a list of unmet expectations. And lately, you don't seem to notice me at all. and off key so tell me again these things are overrated so I can finally rest my head and fall asleep Sort of, I was in a spiritual crisis and I couldn't really get to praying, but that was as close as I could get, I think. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, well. Should we tell folks how they can find out more about your recordings and your, tour, your touring schedule, your performance sure. schedule? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm on the road now, mostly New York, New Jersey, Boston. Um, and they can go to my website, it's laurahiggins.com. That's easy uh, to remember. Yeah, and also on MySpace, so just the myspace.com backslash. Laura Higgins. And yeah, they can contact me through there. And mm -hmm. I also have a lot, of, I work really closely with an organization I was hoping we could talk a little bit about called I'm Too Young for This. Sure. And um, I have one of my songs was licensed to this nonprofit, which basically what they're trying to do is um, create a web portal for young survivors of cancer and, um, and patients going through illness, some kind of cancer, um, to find resources and um, places they can go to find other people that are going through a similar situation. And it's called I'm Too Young For This org. Um, and so it's just, it's a really good cause. And I've got a song on there that um, 
I should play for you now, actually. I, was, I went through cancer myself when I was 19. And uh, I didn't start writing music until after I finished chemotherapy. That's actually what started the whole music process for me. And so it's been really important to be able to um, get with some like-minded people to sort of sort through the messy world of aftercare. <laughs> so anyway, this is called Your Sympathy, 27 Days. And I wrote it from the perspective of having 27 days left until my last chemotherapy treatment. And I just should warn you, I was a very angry patient. I wasn't a very good patient. <laughs> Um, I wasn't the inspirational, look how strong she is patient. I was the one that hid in her room and brooded <laughs> over the meaning of life. <laughs> Somewhere I heard the angry patients are the ones who get better. Yeah, well, it was so in my case. Yeah, I think so. I think that anybody that has drive, though, has the potential to get better. There's more people living with um, having beat cancer than there is people succumbing. And there's the age group between 15 and 40 now. There's over a million cancer patients in the United States alone, wow. and they're surviving. And the whole motto for I'm Too Young for this is to get busy living, to not, to not let cancer be an obstacle for a full and vibrant life. So, yeah. So anyway, this is your sympathy, 27 days, and uh, go take this. In this chair I watch you read and twirl your hair as if you know how much it hurts me every time you bring me soup and crooked smiles but always with advice why I should find a brighter side or bluer sky and when you walk away I don't forgive you for it if you sit and stay, it makes me angry when you talk. I've still got 27 days and zero patience with your sympathy. Our extended family, the cousins that I barely see, send cards to wish me better days ahead. Though I know they've good intentions Leave the bitter taste of metal in my head So if you want to help me Then just watch from where you are Don't tell me I'll be fine Don't tell your friends You think I'm stronger than I am I've still got 27 days Until I'm free Sympathy. And when I look in the mirror, I see a stranger staring me down. A woman in armor, I can't fight any harder when the room spins round and round. Yeah, not such a happy, I'm beating cancer song. <laughs> Powerfully but moving, though. Yeah, that's, it's always a tough one to play, but um, it's important for me to remember where I came from and 
I have a whole bunch of resources for people that are struggling with illness on my website too. So, yeah. And the CD is great. There's an I'm Too Young for the CD, and it's all cancer survivors, singer-songwriters that are on the on the disc, just expressing their journey through um, chemo with art. It's fantastic. I think it's making. You know, it doesn't make it all right, but it it puts some puts it into a creative place. You know. Mm -hmm. Why don't you give the website again? It's www.imtoyoungforthis.org, and you can get there from laurahiggins.com too. So either way, Great. you'll find it. Yeah, so it's cool. What else would you like to give us? Uh, I've got plenty to, to give. Um, I could stay here all day, <laughs> but um, I have an Irish song that one of your cameramen wanted to hear. So I'm Irish, and my family wanted me to. When they found out I was songwriting, they said, well, you need an Irish drinking song. <laughs> and so this is called Buster. And um, it's an Irish pub song. <laughs> On about the break of day, you'll see him walking by. A worn out yellow halo in the twinkle of his eye. And kicking up the dust under his big brown shoes. Buster's got a life to live with nothing left to lose. He'll touch it to your face, then say, I love you to your back. And as you walk away, he'll pour a drink for all you lack. He wears life like a glove that's weather beaten from the ground. But digging up the past is just a waste of one more round. So pull up a stool, he says, and pour me a glass. You're such a fool, he says, and I'm such an ass. But I'll take you home if you're willing to leave. I know that I'm not much, but we've got nowhere else to be. He doesn't care for rumors, but the stories he can tell About how he hung his wings up on the burning gates of hell But I still have a chance, he says, if I give up the drink I'll shake the hand of God if he would bring her back to me So pull up a stool, he says, and pour me a glass You're such a fool, he says, and I'm such an ass But I'll take you home if you're willing to leave, I know that I'm not much, but we've got nowhere else to be. His Anna went and left him when the cancer came to call. She's somewhere in the sky, if you believe in God at all. And if you close your eyes, you'd probably feel her all around. But digging up the past is just a waste of one more round. So pull up a stool, he says, and pour me a glass. You're such a fool, he says, and I'm such an ass. But I'll take you home if you're willing to leave. I know that I'm not much. She says, I don't believe in love, but we've got nowhere else to be. <laughs> That's my bar song. <laughs> Great one. Yeah. I, I know a guy named Jim Hennessy owns Hennessy's Bar in Morristown. He once said to me, God invented whiskey so the Irish wouldn't rule the world. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, I come from a very big Irish family. My, my father's one of 14, so, yeah. Wow, it's a big family. So it's an interesting family reunion, <laughs> to say the least. No, but it's good. We still get together like once a year. My grandmother is amazing. She's like 4'11", and she's had 14 kids in 17 years. Wow. It's ridiculous, yeah. She's got like 40 cousins. So well, I think we have time for one more number from you. One more? All right. Let's see what I've got. We're doing the one that we go out with? Yeah? So then I'm going to switch if, it. If you want. 
Yeah, let's do that. You're gonna play harmonica with me? Yep. Okay. If I was a dancer or a princess If you were a knight in shining silver on your steed Maybe we'd look a little bit different That don't mean a thing to me If you were a drummer and a rock band If I was a tall, a blonde and red We wouldn't be here in this West End We'd be the envy of all our friends So throw down your aces if you've got them And let me call you on your block You get no sympathy for what you lack in mystery I'm not a fool, you're just Stand there waiting for somebody to believe The lies you've told yourself for years and Your fiction like controls an overrated overtone Cause baby all I see is fear So throw down your aces if you've got them Call you on your bluff. You get no sympathy for what you lack in mystery. I'm not a fool, you're just enough. And it's your call, so place your bet.